we have the uh, network settings. Now we have a network type that's static that can be changed between uh, DHCP uh, and triple PoE that can all be changed. Now these because it's set to static that's manual entered for uh, IP, gateway, netmask, primary DNS and even the port. This DVR only needs one port for uh, remote viewing through the internet whereas other DVRs may need two or three ports to be open this one only needs one. By default it's set to 80. Okay now with the like I say you have the ports there now we're not going to go into too much detail with these because we're going to make a separate video from A to Z exactly how to set up remote viewing from scratch uh, that will be released sooner or less very soon so anyway moving on to the next tab at the top here we have SNTP and FTP now of course it says that uh, GMT is plus 8 that's uh, moving along which would you need to change that down to GMT if you this is if you're uh, in the EU uh, Britain EU so you change that to GMT at Greenwich and then it of course it has its own NTP time server now you can have that sync period or uh, you can either sync with that server daily or off so you can change these options in and out now of course we move on to FTP it can be FTP alerted with username password that can all be set up no problem Email as well, you can have email alerts, that's currently set to off as we do not have this DVR connected to the internet as such at the moment. That can be set up, but you, what you need to do is, with uh, connecting it to an email, you need to get all the client settings and put them in properly. If you don't put them all, all the settings in, it'll either not work at all or not work properly. So the best thing to do is set it all up and then give it a test run. Now we'll move on to another part of this menu on the left. We've got display. We've got, uh, with this display, it'll show full screen duration for three minutes. Uh, and then it will uh, minimize. Okay, with also display covert, we can display covert cameras. So what it'll do is it'll display a little picture and it'll say cov on it, whereas and not actually turn it off altogether. We've got HDD display mode, so it'll display HDD size rather than uh, the timing big at the top here at the right. It's got alpha blending and VGA output. This can be put up to a massive resolution of 1600 by 1200. Uh, it's currently set to 1024768, 1280 by uh, 1080, 10, 10, 1024. Uh, these are all, uh, like I say, resolutions, and this one can support up to quite a high resolution. Now we'll move on to the next tab, which is record. Now with this tab, it has a fair few options on this one. Now the first thing I must stress to you is that uh, with motion detection, which is what a lot of people use to save hard drive space, which I mentioned back on the detection tab. So if you you need to go back into the video, feel free. So you need to go back there, have a look, and you can see that on that one that you can actually enable motion detection. If you do that, you must disable manual record. You must turn this off so that it doesn't get confused otherwise it'll conflict on the actual DVR and it won't record anything at all moving down you got uh, event records that's an event it will record you can be timer record pre alarm record so that's a if you set um, a time for the DVR to start recording it will kick in a couple of seconds before so it doesn't actually miss anything while spinning up the hard drive and whatnot now this is overwrite most people use overwrite uh, to overwrite the hard drive when it's full it'll start from the beginning again however a lot of people don't want to do that they may want to stop it and have a sift through and see what they, they have actually got but we'll leave this on on ours uh, we've got event record all channels so you can change that to off so it won't record all channels uh, now this keep data limit uh, in some countries they're limited to actually how many days of data they're allowed to keep but in the UK you know, people get as much as they can really I mean look if you open up this it'll ch change it how many days you actually want to limit it to so if you're in a country that has a law of only seven days then you must select that and it'll only limit seven days worth of recording okay so we'll just have a if you go down to devices this is just a simple setup for PTZ cameras across channels really simple stuff moving back onto the uh, main menu we can actually go to uh, event information and this will give us uh, when we can look through what time we've actually recorded so we've got the date we'll set the date for today so let's have a look now so the 20th of February we want it across all channels and we want to have a look at all the channels that we have actually seen now where it's green it'll show recorded time anything else is is probably blank okay so let's go back into the green there and it will actually show us live playback here ok 
okay and if you open this up on the side you can actually go you can actually have a look at the little tools there but uh, yeah that'll show a uh, live playback so yep and you move the mouse down and uh, you can have slow playback the next hour which is helpful if you're looking for something where you're not sure where it is these are all really useful options that'll give you backup options now like I said on previous videos with this DVR it'll use USB backup which I must stress must be FAT32 not NTFS or FAT16 um, format uh, but the, the most popular way to do it now is actually through the network because you're not limited to space and time of what you can have okay so coming back off this we'll go back now yep so we've come back off uh, the playback we go back onto this just briefly for a second now we can see here we've got a uh, event search that's another way to search in the event type motion or alarm that's just like say events or alarms HDD info will give you information on the hard drive that's how much hard drive size is remaining as you can see this hard drive is a one terabyte hard drive now underneath this on the left is the event log this is very useful as to see what's actually happened who's logged in when they were logged in when it was locked or unlocked when the vid cameras have been unplugged or plugged in it's very very useful now of course we can always clean this you can go to the next page uh, as says no data as we've not had it in that long or you could clear the actual page yep so let's clear that and it's empty again so let's go back to that from that onto the main menu being back on the main menu we're going to go into the last uh, tab that we haven't covered yet which is schedule setting this is a really easy setup all we have to do is look at the days now this is one I was tampering with earlier uh, we've got Sunday all the way down to Saturday with the weekdays in the middle now let's say we have a Wednesday I want to schedule my recording from midnight or six o'clock in the morning we can do that I can spread it across the any days um, that will just record at them times so all the other times it won't actually record okay so moving on to left we'll go to detection this will show detection of when the cameras um, can be motion detected uh, they can be tripped so if we change it from midnight till 10 in the morning from between them times that means that the cameras can be tripped into recording on the motion detection anytime outside this they cannot be um, activated so you must if you want to do that you must put the detection detection timer on there let's come off that and if we go on to the other tab on the left we've got alarm same exactly the same scenario it can only be alarmed let's say midnight till eight o'clock at night that can that's the only time that can be tripped on a Wednesday okay so it save you overall if you want to do this it saves you space but you've also got to think here in case any um, actions arise during this time that it's not recording okay so moving back to the main menu well that's everything covered on that menu so if we go back okay well I'm just here on the main uh, the main display there's another part I'd like to bring up about these DVRs um, is that with the 674 and the now discontinued 791 the another third party company has been bringing out clones of these DVRs they look exactly the same to look at very similar firmware but they're nowhere near as good not as reliable not got half tech chipsets inside and they're really bad bad quality I mean some of them are even H.264 compression so you should always buy them from a reputable com company such as UK Security Sharp or just someone with a big reputation that you know you can trust and make sure it is labelled as a genuine Avtech now be beware as well because these clones obviously don't come with uh, warranty from Avtech okay so that pretty much sums up the functionality of the DVR which is the Avtech KPD674 more guides can be found at securityguide.com and okay so that pretty much sums up the uh, functions of the KPD674 DVR remember if you need any more videos on different DVRs you can always pick them up at uh, securityguide.co.uk and all products shown on these videos can be obtained from ukseurityshop.com thanks for listening